In first-of-its-kind legislation, the National Park Service and the Ogallala Sioux have proposed the 133,000-acre south unit of Badlands National Park be turned into a tribal national park. The south unit falls within Pine Ridge Reservation, home to the Ogallala Sioux, but the tribe has not always had the right to manage and operate those lands. The government condemned this area for a bombing range during World War II. Then in 1968, Congress conveyed the land back to the tribe with the stipulation that the land be held in trust and administered by the National Park Service. In 2012, the Park Service and the tribe completed a management plan and environmental impact statement which recommended that Congress designate the South Unit as a tribal national park. Special provisions for tribal hiring and customs were included, and the tribe would own and run buffalo on the new park. We were hired to conduct a feasibility study for reintroducing buffalo to the south unit and found that the landscape is capable of handling a herd of more than a thousand buffalo. A herd this size would advance the bison conservation objectives of the tribe and the park service. Since buffalo would be owned by the tribe, multiple economic development opportunities could be created in an area facing 80% unemployment. The tribe also has an existing herd of 650 buffalo and we help them redesign that herd's management plan. One challenge is that the tribe donates roughly half its total buffalo output each year for cultural uses, which causes a conflict with basic finance. To put it simply, expenses of running buffalo greatly exceed revenue from sales and hunts. So we wanted to maintain the people's cultural connection to buffalo while bolstering the program's finances. One avenue for blending culture and finance is through splitting a buffalo carcass. All meat used in traditional tribal ceremonies is cubed for stewing, but the best cuts like ribeyes, tenderloins, and sirloins could be sold on the open market, while the remainder of the carcass could be cubed for traditional tribal uses. This would allow the tribe to act as a purveyor of top buffalo meat, creating a financial incentive to produce the best animals and command the best prices. They would also then have an incentive to be good land stewards using modern day grazing practices to produce the best meat. We concluded that the revised management plan would allow the ecological resources of the area to accommodate the biological demands of the buffalo and meet the cultural demands of the people. In creating the Tribal National Park, tribe and park service need to view themselves as partners rather than antagonists continuing a decades-long battle over disputed lands. And successful management of both the tribe's existing herd and the new herd of over a thousand buffalo will begin with a profitable business model. If political forces and positive incentives can be aligned, the opportunity exists for both the tribe and the park service to be ecological, cultural, and economic pioneers.